Welcome back to RedHeart.com as well as the Crochet Crowd. I'm your host Mikey. Today's tutorial we're going to work on the wavy long wristers. You will be so shocked on how easy these are. I'm going to be showing you some different techniques in it. Do you see that there's really no slip stitch anywhere? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. I'm going to show you how to cheat the system that is not in the pattern so that you cannot see where you stopped and started. And that's just you know being, being experienced and being able to show you that. We're also going to be doing today is that you see different colors and I know myself is like you don't want to change colors all the time. You don't want to weave in your ends. I'm telling you right now you don't have to. These yarn pieces never change and so when you're looking at the inside you'll notice that the yarn is just carrying over from one row to another. So you don't have to cut any strings. It's really good and let me tell you a little bit more about this in just a sec. Today's pattern is very very easy but you'll be very surprised to know that this is not just like a tube sock that you're putting onto your hand. It actually has some shaping to it. When we go to work on it we're going to be working on it up here and this is where your fingers are popping out. You'll see that there is a thumb hole just like so and so we're going to work from the top so the end of your hand all the way down to the elbow area. You will notice that it's going to be changing shape a few times within it so that it keeps the contour of your hand. Now if you saw the model you'll see that it fits her hand really easily and really quite uh, form fitting and that's because the designer has changed it. Now today's pattern here is using the Heads Up and this is a brand new yarn line by RedHeart.com. It's new as of 2014. If you can't find it in a retailer near you near you, you can always go on to redheart.com to place your order. Now you should know that this yarn is very very unique is that it's not 100% acrylic. It's 80% acrylic, 20% wool. Therefore it has like warm properties to it. You'll also notice that it's a bulky weight. So if you're going to substitute for this particular project today, you're going to want to make sure that it's a bulky weight in order to keep the sizing proper. So without further ado, let's get started and I'll show you how easy it is to make one of these wavy long wristers. So here's what it looks like on my hand. It's kind of funky isn't it? Fluorescent is the thing right now. Fluorescent not the whole body head to toe and fluorescent but a little bit of accessories and why not? You only live once right? So today you'll notice that there's V uh, stitches just like so. When they are compressed together meaning that I don't have this all the way pulled up to my elbow you'll notice that all the V shapes kind of sit into each other and really makes for a nice comfort. Now remember in warmth that sometimes the air pockets that keep the warmth it's not necessarily but keeping everything you know really snug. So depending where you live it makes it really easy. So what I'm using today is the heads up and I'm going to be using a size 5 millimeter size H but the pattern calls for a size 5 and a half millimeter size I. The reason why I have substituted is that I know that my yarn uh, for example I know that my tension is a little bit looser than normal crocheters. So I just reduce my hook in order to have a shape because I knew if I used the right size that my uh, glove probably will not fit me like a glove. So without further ado let's get started now. Let's start off with our first color and I want to leave a little bit of an extra long string so I can weave that into the end. This is going to be the very top of your hand right here and that's going to move backward towards your elbow. So because of that we want to make sure that we can hide this loose end in very nicely. So leave an extra long tail. Let's begin with our slip knot and slip in our hook and we need to chain 24. Remember that the one on the hook never counts as 24. So we have one, two, three, four and five. Please go all the way to 24 and I'll meet you back here in just a moment. Now that I have my 24 on my hook I'm just going to stretch out my, my uh, chain and I want to make sure it's not twisted and I just want to make sure then I join it. Now you'll see in the instructions that it will ask you to do a slip uh, stitch marker or a, or a stitch marker. I found with this pattern you don't really need it because you can actually see what is going on but again that's a personal choice. So to, to bring this together we're just going to bring the yarn through and through and there is your very first ring and this is the very edge of your finger so your fingers will actually go through this particular loop just like so. Using the same color we're going to start and do these V stitches and this is how we're going to do it. It's called actually um, a V stitch if you really want to be technical. So we're going to start off with chaining a four. So one, two, three and four and in the rules of crochet that counts as a double crochet slash chain one. So just envision that and we're going to double crochet exactly where you joined. Okay. So that is one of the V stitches just like so. Just bear with me it does work out. So what I want to do then is that I want to continue along. So we're going to skip two chains and go to the third and we're going to go a double crochet again. Just like so and then chain one and then double crochet into the same one. 
So that's basically the repeat pattern for this whole thing. So again, skip two stitches, one and two, go to the third and do it again. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet and please do that all the way around and meet you back in just a moment. If you're gonna screw up at this point at the end, I'm gonna show you how to cheat the system because we have to make sure this stays in balance at this time. So I'm coming all the way back around and how do I know that I'm done? If you look at the instructions it says at the end there will be eight repeats. Therefore there should be eight of these V stitches. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight just like so. So what you want to do then is that we want to join it to the actual gapping space. So this is my own technique that I'm showing you to avoid having any slip stitch marks within your uh, items as we go going to change color because we're going to change color in just a moment. So what I want you to do is that I want you just to go into the gapping space and to the first V, grab the yarn, pull through just like so. And when I come back I'm going to show you how to add on the next color. We're never going to cut this so we're not, please do not cut your yarn at this time. I'm going to grab my secondary color and I'm gonna just leave an extra long tail so that I can deal with that after as well. This is the very beginning of it and we're never gonna cut this until the very end. So what I want you to do is just put a slip knot onto your hook, pull that through the loop. Now the reason why I'm asking you to do this is that, and here's my own technique on what I'm getting you to do. Right where I slip stitch into this, I want you then just to stick your hook into the hole and grab that yellow and pull it through like a slip stitch like so. And what that's done is that it makes it look like this whole thing is uniform as you go all the way around. I did try using the, uh, the pink and then I found I had one stitch that looks a little awkward. So when I did it like this, it makes a lot more sense. So we're going to begin, let's begin round number two and we're just going to simply chain up four. So one, two, three and four and then we're gonna go into the same space. Now what I just do is that I trap these strings all underneath for this particular gap only. Okay, so it's a, just a double crochet, so there's your V-stitch. And now I'm gonna make sure that these are out of the way and behind. Okay, so please do not run over those again because you gotta make sure that that pink is gonna be available to you next time you get back up to this round. So what we're going to do then in between all of the V-stitches, so here's the V-stitch there with the chain one, we're just gonna simply just repeat what's going on. So we're just gonna double crochet, chain one, double crochet into that one. Okay, so you go to the next V-stitch, so double crochet, whoops, excuse me. So we're just double crocheting, chain one, double crochet and you just do that all the way around. This keeps the stitches in balance because you're working into the same spaces every time. Okay, so just double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Please do that all the way around. When we come back I'm going to show you the next uh, round up as we go. Okay, we're finishing up round number two. Here's a V-stitch and here's one more left before we are back at the beginning again. And then of course it's a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So I'm going to show you how to change the colors back to the pink again. So we're just going to immediately just go into the first gap. So we're just going to stretch over, pull this through and through. Okay, so what I want you to do now is that I want you to grab the pink that is leading to the yarn ball. You'll see a straggler at this point, just ignore that. And I just want you to grab the other pink one that is going to the yarn ball like so. And you're going to pull that through. But you're not done. You want to make sure that you do a slip uh, stitch around into that same gapping space. It makes a huge difference and you want to make sure that you're going to trap that yellow in there as well. So it's underneath. So just pull through like so. And that was not very graceful let me tell you. So what I want to just do is back out, just pull all the strings back again and just redo that one more time. I want to make sure that we get this right the very first time because you don't want to have uh, any kind of accident. So I'm going to leave this in the tutorial. So we got the pink on, we're just going to go into the gap and pull through and through. So do you see how when we did that, see how this yellow kind of matches up? It makes it look the same. If I would have not done it like this, you'll see that this area right here would be wrong. So let's move up to round number three. It's a repeat. So we're just going to chain four, one, two, and three, and four, and then going into the same spot again for a double crochet. And then every V stitch is getting the same thing. So make sure this is out of the way as we continue to do that. So it's just double crochet, chain one, 
double crochet into each one of the tops of the v-stitch and you can see that the v-stitch is all just line up with each other. Just like I showed you how they compress when it's not stretched, you just have to visualize it like that in order to keep yourself in balance. So please do round number three and I'll meet you back up in just a moment and then the game plan changes in round number four. Okay, completing round number three, I've just had my last v-stitch in and I'm just going to insert it into the next one here, pull through and now let's drop that pink down in the back, grab up the yellow and pull through like so and let's complete that off so that it looks balanced. So we're just gonna go into the same gapping space like so and just grab that same yellow just to make it look like it's balanced. Okay, so let's uh, begin to round number four. Round number four changes at the end of the round. So let's uh, begin first and we're going to chain four and I'm gonna stay with you for the complete round four to watch with you. I just double crocheted in to complete the V. So everything is remaining the same. So we're just gonna V-stitch into each one of the V's. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So what we're doing now is that we're gonna be adding a thumb space at the end of this round. And that's pretty easy stuff to do so just continue to V. I don't have any good jokes to share with you as we go around, sorry. <laughs> okay, so we're just Ving into each one. You know like that movie, uh, that sh show as a kid used to scare the crap out of me, the V I think it was called, with the aliens that had these human bodies. Oh my god, scared me. So let's go, we're continuing to V around. And then I think there was a remake of it but I never really believed the remake. It obviously got canceled too because it wasn't that great. <laughs> Maybe I'm telling jokes. Okay, so we're gonna V all the way around and you're gonna go into the very last V before you start to come to the very beginning again. So here's what we're going to do is that once you get your last V in, we want to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. We're making room for the thumb and now we just come into this gapping space again. Let's slip stitch it together to form the round and let's drop it and let's bring back our pink up and now we're ready for round number five. Okay, round number five, we're gonna start up immediately. I had you do this already with grabbing the new color. Let's grab it so we're gonna chain four and V into the same one underneath. Just like you see here. So you can actually see, I just see this is what happens when you screw up. <laughs> so this is what I wanna show you. I never see how I never did a slip stitch into that gap. That's why I had you do that. Because when you don't do that, it doesn't look right. So just slip stitch into the gapping space first. See how different that looks? And then chain four. Sometimes it's good to show errors so that people can understand, you know, Exactly, because you don't really see that their slip stitching is going on. So let's uh, just move this yellow out of the way in the back and we're gonna V all the way around except for when we get to the thumb, we're gonna just change up the storyline a little bit. So I'll follow you to there. And I still don't have any great stories to share with you. This uh, pattern was on the homepage of redheart.com when the uh, website got relaunched in, I believe it was August and um, you'll notice that the woman with the, the brick wall and uh, she's quite pretty and she was wearing um, a set that's purple and blue and uh, I thought it would be a lot harder than it was and so I just grabbed a hook this afternoon and of course I was very surprised. And I shouldn't have been but I was. So there you go and I come out and I have the last V before this thumb. So let's uh, continue to V in the V and so here is where the game plan is going to change. You need to do two more V's into this. So basically this is making room for your, your thumb because if you look at your thumb, you see how it gets bigger in behind? So it's making room to, in order to do that. So we're gonna V twice into the same gapping space. So that was one and then we're gonna do it again. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet and then we're going to just join it back to where we started and that completes off round number five. Let me just slip stitch like so, grab the yellow, get it ready and then when I come back I gotta make sure I slip stitch that back in to that same gap in order to carry on. So let's join me back at round number six. 
So round number six, let's go. We have the yellow in, but we need to slip stitch it to this gap, first V gap first to make it look consistent, which it does now. And then we chain four. One, two, th two, three, and four. And then V back into that same spot. Okay, so this whole round here, even though you got V's now on this thumb, you're going to put a V into every one of them. So this is a very easy round. You know there's no counting. Just put a V into every V as you call it, go all the way around. When we come back, I'll be all the way around and then we'll carry on to round number seven. Okay, finishing up round number six. Here is the V over top of this thumbnail space or this thumb space. Just remember, keep them together and make sure you're going into the, uh, the middle of both of them with another V. And this is establishing the pattern to be bigger to go over the back end of your thumb right about there. Okay, so one into each, one V into each V, like so. And then we're just going to join it to where we started, like so. Let's grab our pink back up, put it onto the hook, pull through, and then we're ready now for the next round, which is round number seven. Let's begin round number seven. I want to make sure I slip stitch into this V first to create that illusion of it being continuous. And then I'm going to chain four, one, two, three, and four. And please V into almost every one of these. We want to continue to go around. Just follow me around at this time. And we're going to do a V every one of them except for the final last two. Now if you remember the last two, we were just over top of the thumb. We're now going to start doing a decreasing move and you don't have to burn any brain cells. It's really easy. We're just going to start skipping over some steps in order to make the decreasing happen on its own. Now you have to really trust in this pattern. It, it does work. Um, I was kind of second guessing. I'm like, what? What is she saying? And then I realized, you know what, don't trust, <laughs> don't uh, question the designer, just do it <laughs> kind of thing. You have to give faith sometimes and that this is exactly one of those patterns that you do that on. So here we go. Let's say uh, we're continuing along. So we're just looking for over top of the thumb or you just look for the last two V uh, stitches that are available and that's where the storyline is going to change. Okay, so it says to look for the last two repeats and there you go. So you have these two left. So what we're just going to do is one double crochet into the middle and then one double crochet into the next middle. That's it. That's how you just decreased and then we're just going to join, slip stitch, Grab the yellow back up on the outside and let's begin round number eight. Let's begin round number eight and we have our yellow up but I want to make sure I slip stitch into the V stitch gap first to keep the consistency looking good and then chain four. And then we're going to do V stitches into almost every one of these. We're going to do some double crochet decreasing at the end of this uh, revolution as we go all the way around. But at this time I just want you to put in V stitches matching into each one until we get to those double crochets at the very end that we just did. Okay, so V into V. See how easy this pattern is? I was really surprised. I was looking at her gloves and I thought to myself, gee, there's got to be a lot more to it. <laughs> it's just a visual look of the waves and I think it's awesome. So we're just going to continue to go all the way around. So right where we have those du two double crochets that are standing alone, we're going to pull a decreasing move on those to bring them even more closer together. And here's the kicker of this whole thing. Do you remember how we started off when we had right over here we had a group of eight? We're coming back to that now by doing this particular move. So there's the last V here and there is the two standing by itself and we're just going to put in a, a decrease. So we're just going to go into the stitch, so grab, go into the double crochet, Grab the yarn, pull up, pull through two and hold that on your hook. Let's go to the next one, into the next one, pull up, pull through the loop. Now you have three on your hook, pull through all three and then that concludes that one. So we're just going to join this with the starting like so and let's grab our pink back up and that concludes round number eight. So that you can see now the shaping is actually starting to take shape. So you can see this is the end of your hand. This is your thumb and you can see that it's coming more narrow as it comes back down to your wrist area. 
So let's begin rounds number 10 all the way to 13. So there's actually four revolutions at this time. And I'm just gonna show you, start you off and then I want you to do the rest uh, off camera. So remember we're just gonna start slip stitch the pink through so it looks consistent and then do your chain four. So for rounds number 10, or 11, 12, and 13, all you're just going to do is then in the V-stitch into each V-stitch. Make sure, sure you're changing the colors for each revolution as you go around. You're not decreasing, you're not increasing, you're just continuing to go all the way around. And that would be 10, 11, 12, and 13. Please do that now. And when I come back, I'll be on round number 14. And we're gonna start doing some increasing because this is coming back down. And then we're gonna be moving up our arm where it gets thicker as we start going up toward the elbow. By the way, I'm just finishing up round number 10. I wanna show you here. Remember when we did the two together? You're just gonna completely skip over that. So you got your V-stitch and the V-stitch. Skip that and just immediately join like so. Okay, so you just skip that whole section right there. So please do that and I'll meet you back on round number 14 next time for sure. Let's begin round number 14 and I've already started and I have the color up but I have to do my slip stitch first to keep the color looking. See, you don't see any slip stitching. So let's uh, begin. We're going to chain four and then V-stitch into each V-stitch going all the way around. Now round number 14 is about increasing and we have to do round number 14 again in the future but what we need to do is that we need to get rounds number um, 14, 15, 16, and 17 in before we repeat. So this is getting it to be slightly bigger. This is an increased round, but we're gonna increase on the very last um, section before we do join with a slip stitch. Like so. So we're just going a V into a V. Very quick and easy project really. I was really surprised how fast it went. I've done other wristers where it didn't take this, where it took much longer, but this is actually pretty cool. Um, the advantage to this as well is that it, because it is wool, it's gonna have warm properties to it so that you're not gonna look fabulous but freeze. <laughs> you know, they say fashion can be painful, but you know, this is not one of those. So let's uh, continue to V into each V, and then we're coming all the way around. We wanna make sure that we don't mess up that <laughs> other color. Uh, we don't wanna secure it anywhere else the yellow I mean and we're going to be all the way into the very last V and this is where the game plan changes. We're going to do a slight increase at this point. So it says right in between the slip stitch here. So right here's the V stitch, here's the V stitch. We're going to go right in between and we're going to put another V stitch and this is going to increase it by one V all the way around and that's round number 14. And we're going to join like so. Grab the yellow up, drop the pink and let's begin to do round number 15. Okay, let's begin to do round number 15 and we're just going to, I got the yellow in but I need to do my slip stitch first to make it look consistent and then we just chain four, three and four and we're gonna do a V-stitch into each V-stitch going all the way around. So this is one as a no-brainer. So rounds number 15, 16 and 17. So the next three rounds are the exact same. So I'm gonna expect you to do that uh, off camera and then when I come back we're gonna uh, review uh, round number 14 again because we have to repeat round number 14, 15, 16, and 17 uh, after we uh, get that uh, particular one done and then basically you are all finished for this glove. So please at this time we are doing rounds number uh, 15, 16, and 17 and when we come back I'll meet you back up on rounds number 18 which is a repeat of round number 14. <laughs> Isn't that confusing? Just trust me. So just do uh, rounds 15, 16, and 17 at this time. So I'm back again and rounds number 15, 16, and 17 are done and now let's start off with round number 18 to 21 and if you look in the instructions it's a repeat of 14 to 17. So this is crazy, right? It's fun. So this is the final stages. So on this one here uh, we're going to start off with round number 18 which is a repeat of round number 14. So that means that we're going to just start off with the V as normal. I did that slip stitching thing without really mentioning it to you because I think you're catching on by this point. And so I'm just gonna V all the way around but we need to increase again because we're getting closer and closer to your elbow as we work up. So we need to increase this round as we go all the way. So no big deal. So V into V and essentially round number 14 had us put an extra V in between the slip stitch and, and uh, final V stitch when we got there. So I'm gonna show you that in just a second. Getting all the way around. Now I'm starting to speed up and drop my stitches. 
No man. So let's uh, continue along. So let's keep going. It's gonna switch. It's getting bigger and bigger. Now I really thought when I looked at this pattern that it was more like a sock where it doesn't change its uh, um, diameter but I was really surprised that it does change because it really means that it's gonna shape better to you. There's some designers that just like socks and just hopefully <laughs> it stretches properly and holds its shape. And I really liked how this one wasn't like that. So V-stitch into each as we're coming all the way around. So I got one left. But this is a repeat of 14. So this means after this V is in, we're gonna add another one in between the gapping spaces here. So this is a V and V here. We're gonna put another one right there. So it's like so. And this completes off round number 18 which is a repeat of round number 14. Let's join like so. Bring up the yellow and let's just get this puppy done. So I have my yellow now. We're ready for round number 19. Round number 19. So let's just join with this slip stitch here. We have it in and four. So one, two, 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 <laughs> two, three and four and then V. So basically the final revolutions of this 19, 8, or 19, 20 and 21 are all just V stitch into the same V stitches around and that's it. This is it completely done. So I'm gonna leave that for you. So please do these rounds. So this is round number 19. Do 20 and 21 and when we come back then I'll just show you how to fasten in the ends so that you don't have it falling out when you're wearing them. So please do that and I'll see you in just a moment. Okay, I'm finishing up round number 21 which is the final and we just wanna slip stitch and pull it together just like so. So let's uh, start, we're gonna uh, just trim off our yarn and I'm just gonna start off with the pink one first because that's where I am and just gonna trim and I'm just going to put the yarn through the final loop and just pull through like this. Okay, I wanna trim the yellow as well just being very generous with it. And what I want to do is I want to start off with the pink. And we're going to do this on both sides. And so I'm just going to show you the one side just because it's the same. So we're just going to slip our yarn through a darning needle. And remember that in order for anything to fall out, it has to, it can, in order for anything to fall out, it, has, it can't be secured that great. So you have to make sure that you're going to go in three different directions. So you're going to go underneath the strings and out one, okay. Go back but go through a different area of the fibers for two and going back into a different area again for three. So the yarn can never move in three directions at one time therefore this will be permanently in a position and you'll never see it like so. So then we do the same thing with the yellow in behind. So let's just fold it out like so, like so. and we put the yellow onto the darning needle. like that and we just glide it through the yellow area only. So just glide it through. Don't glide it across the space because you will see it. So just glide it where the yarn continues to go through. So one and then back in to a different space for two and going back again for three like so. I love how this pattern you never had to change the yarn throughout the whole thing. So like so. So that's what we want to do and therefore you have a perfect finish on the on the end and this is up by the elbow and now I'm just going to again do the same thing on the other side here for the pink. And that concludes off today's tutorial. Thank you so much for joining me and on behalf of redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd. Please enjoy your wavy long wristers compliments at redheart.com.